uh, my name is Eric Villas-Boas. I'm the managing editor for 20 Watts. So, you guys, A Place to Bury Strangers, have been called the loudest band in New York. You've toured with names like Nine Inch Nails and MGMT, and you've also been compared to the Jesus and Mary Chain, My Bloody Valentine, and like a bunch of other shoegazers. How do you guys feel about all these labels that you're associated with? Um, I mean, that's fine. You know, I'm usually not even really paying attention too much. I think that, um, you know, people can come to their own conclusions and say whatever they want, and that's fine if that helps people come out to shows or if it hinders it, whatever, that's fine. I think we're doing something kind of different than a lot of that stuff, so when, um, you know, I think they should judge for themselves, and then you'll hopefully get people who like music and not people who are concerned with what labels are about bands. Mm-hmm. And, um... All right, and you guys signed to Mute Records early on this year, and before that, you released your debut on Killer Pimp. Um, was it a difficult time finding a new record label? Like, how did you guys like Mute Now, and would you guys release another album with them? Yeah, well, we're definitely going to release another album with them. And they've just been awesome to work with. I mean, they're, it's all like a lot of people who even started the record label who are still there, and, um, you know, it's, uh, they're just almost even like working with kind of an indie label as well. It's just everyone is really into music and easy to talk to and hang out with. It doesn't seem like it's anything that's big. And, I mean, at least in that sense, you know what I mean? It's very personable and easy to deal with and they're not really like forcing us to do anything we don't want to do or anything. So it's been great. That's good. That's great. Um, yeah, how did you guys respond to your album leaking? Like, there are a lot of independent musicians who go on the defensive whenever their work leaks like Atlas Sound didn't really enjoy when Logos leaked so like I was just wondering like how do you guys respond to that to your album leaking I think that's fine I mean you know I'm all for just the people having the music you know I mean I think definitely I've been done this for so long I'm not doing it for the money and it's all just about you know if kids want to hear music and want to get into it and that's great mm-hmm. um, I think any way they get it is totally cool. That's great. Um, at the same time, like a lot of publications have commented on how your latest album is constructed a lot more tightly than the first. Like it's not as, I guess it's not as abrasive. They say. Um, could you give me some information on like why they might be thinking that, or like, like what you guys did differently this time around, if anything? Like how, how was like the recording process? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if. I mean, I think it's still pretty abrasive, the record, but um, but this, you know, this record we recorded in a lot shorter of amount of time, and mm-hmm. we kind of just, everything was done a lot more minimally, and we're kind of trying to capture more of a live sound, there's a lot more live instruments on this record. Right. So, um, I think that, you know, maybe putting that all together and how we just sort of even spent the time to kind of get the right sounds with, uh, you know, with a lot less instruments, maybe gives it that sort of slick. Kind of sounds, you know. I don't know if that's what we're going to be doing in the future, but it just seemed like, you know, something that we kind of wanted to do for this record. Is you know, people are always talking about our live show and whatnot, and so it just kind of. I mean, and I'm even it, it, you know interested in it too. So there was kind of that sort of balance with this record, I think, between what it's like when we're all sort of playing live, as opposed to you know all the tracks being like individually recorded and. You know, kind of like, and it was, there was also a lot less, I think, even of maybe, you know extreme experimentation on this record. Mm-hmm. I think it's a lot more straightforward than the last record. So, yeah, that must have some sort of influence on that as well. Yeah, and uh, in addition to playing for a place to bury strangers, you also run the effects pedal company Death by Audio. Um, it's got like this. It's got like a pretty awesome reputation as like a factory, like an like an arts and music venue and a recording studio. How did you get into making effects pedals and why? Um, I mean, I got into building effects pedals because I wanted to create music that you know, create sounds that I couldn't really get anywhere else. And so, um, and this was kind of even a long time ago, and it just would be kind of like trying to build stuff. And you know, I was always into like every kind of aspect of the band stuff, you know, even be like booking tours and, mm-hmm. you know, starting record labels and all of that stuff just to kind of get my own bands off the ground and be involved with that. And so building effects was just part of that when, you know, you're recording yourself and you want to create different sounds when you're playing shows and you want to go for something else that you can't find. But the, uh, the effects pedal company even kind of started on a fluke where I just, you know, came out with the first pedal because I was wanted to go on this vacation to Europe and um, hmm. just kind of took off from there. 
That is pretty cool. All right, my last question is, just out of curiosity, what's the origin of the name A Place to Bury Strangers? The uh, band was named um, by our old drummer. And, uh, it's from a Alistair Crowley poem, oh, okay. um, um, which means A Place to Bury Strangers. That's very cool. Alistair Crowley, he was a... Um, he was like an occultist, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that your music itself is like informed by like his work or like the occult in general or? Yeah, sure. A little Some bit. All right. All right. Read a bunch of his stuff and it's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for talking with me today, Oliver. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah.